As conditions in Sudan became unbearable, millions of Sudanese fled from their homes arriving in neighboring countries such as Ethiopia, Uganda, Kenya, and Egypt. Because of previous relations between Egypt and Sudan and because of its geographical location, Egypt holds a large number of 50,000 Sudanese refugees. However, only 18,750 of them are recognized by the UNHCR as refugees. The remaining 31,250 of them are either waiting for their refugee status determination known as RSD or have been rejected as refugees by the UNHCR. Nevertheless, all Sudanese refugees face difficult living conditions here in Egypt. <laughs> يعني دينيا وخطيبي اللي كان في السودان خطيبني هو جاب هنا في مصر ما جاش كمان بالطريقة الشرعية هو جاب رجله يعني انت ما بتصدقيش يعني لو انا اقول لك هو جاب رجله من من السودان يعني انت ما بتصدقيش كده Before 1995 Sudanese refugees were able to enter Egypt with no visa requirement However, Egypt closed down its borders and applied visa requirements for refugees coming here. Though 556 Sudanese asylum seekers apply for refugee status each month, the UNHCR stopped accepting them as refugees. This means that Sudanese asylum seekers can no longer be under the protection of the UNHCR and therefore they can no longer legally come to Egypt. As soon as refugees come to Cairo, they are stunned by the conditions they have to live in. They fled Sudan in hope of a better life, one filled with opportunities. However, what they find is many problems, such as unemployment, discrimination, and lack of education. Julie, a refugee living in Egypt for 10 years, said, We fled Sudan thinking we would find safety under the protection of the UN and international law. But the truth is, life isn't much better for us now than it was in Sudan. In addition, some of the refugees living here lost their homes, which drove them to protest and live in the streets for three months, demanding better living conditions. However, the UNHCR did little in response. <laughs> وده اللي خلاهم هم يسكنوا في العراء بعد كده لانه كلهم بقى ما فيش ما فيش مساعدات ماليه بتقدم لهم وبالتالي ما يعني كله طلع من البيوت اللي كانوا ماجرينها وما فيش غير العراء هم سكنوا في العراء يعني اكثر من ثلاثة شهور بالاضافه للمشاكل الصحيه يعني اللي ما عندوش فلوس ما يقدرش يتعالج يعني يساعد نفسه في انه يتعالج وكده و إضافة له هي مشاكل التعليم كلهم مش الأطفال بس يعني حتى الناس الكبار فيهم في في ناس كان عندها رغبة تتعلم وكذا في بعض المنظمات قدمت مساعدات في هذا الإطار يعني برامج توعية للاقي برامج تدريب على بعض الحرف مثل النجارة أو الحدادة أو البناء يعني كانت هنالك محاولات مشروعات ولكن أعتقد أنها لم تكن كبيرة ولم تكن شاملة لكل كانت محدودة في إطار ضيق جدا هذه هي المشاكل يعني تتلخص في التعليم والصحة والإيواء Refugees receive little financial aid making employment necessary to their survival However, Egypt's overall unemployment is 25% Therefore, refugees have no opportunities at all in addition, many of them are not allowed to obtain work permits, making employment impossible, and those of them who do work do so in poor conditions and are treated badly with little pay in return. A refugee named Martha says, There is nothing done for us. No help, nothing. We are living in, the ha in bad conditions here. We work sometimes in the houses of the Egyptians, and they treat us badly. Sometimes at the end of the month, they tell us to leave, and they refuse to pay our salary. I need the money. I cannot pay for my apartment. Now, um, I know there's a lot of issues around the refugees, but at, the, at this, this is called the Displaced Refugee Center, so it's all of the refugees who can't find any kind of supportive work while they're here. So they've moved out to this area. Um, about half of them have UN status, as I understand. 
are recognized by the UN and the other half aren't, or they're waiting review. Sudanese refugees face a huge amount of discrimination living here. They are looked down upon because of their dark skin and poor conditions. Many of them consider Egypt their second home. However, a home should be a place where there is justice, equality, and opportunities. And refugees have none of that. يعني في في منهم بيعملوني كويس في منهم بيعملوني برضه وحش يعني فما كنتش ما كنتش راضي بالوضع اللي كانوا بيعملوني وحش يعني فالناس كلها مش طبيعه واحده في منه كده وفي منه كده يعني فانا كنت بعاني من الناس اللي بيدوني كلام وحش فلكن نشكر ربنا لانه انا اتحملتهم يعني وشكرت ربنا في الحته دي يعني معامله مش كويسه يعني الطفل الصغير هو بحيث يعني الناس وانت واخده بالك معظم الناس كانوا من الجنوب وبشرتهم سمره خالص فالطلبه اللي وهم صغار مش معذورين يعني فبينظروا له نظره مش كويسه ويعني كده يعني من حاجات بالشكل ده بيشوف انه كل الناس الطفل الصغير بيستغرب ازاي الراجل ده كده فهذه المساله هي ممكن تؤثر على نفسياته وبالتالي مش هيكون كويس مش هيتقبل الوضع يعني تمام Living in the 21st century, people now understand the value of education. An uneducated person is considered a person with no future. Therefore, education is one of life's necessities. However, Sudanese refugees living in Cairo lack this important aspect of life. Little or no education programs are provided for them. In addition, they are unable to attend public schools due to lack of space and denial of acceptance. While some are accepted in private schools, they do not last long because of their inability to pay tuition. Therefore, they are in great need of education. Well, mostly what they asked for is they wanted to learn. You know, they were like, we want English, we want math, we want books, we want, we want school. Because they all know that if and when they get, uh, re if they get a visa to another country, they will have entered that country years and years and years behind all the other students because they haven't had schooling. And they're also going to have to know English because mostly it's Australia, um, the U.S. and Canada that take them. Um, if they get resettled back in um, Sudan again, they're going to be five, six years behind their classmates. So they wanted schooling and they still ask for that they wanted a place to play because they don't have anywhere to play soccer or to do any kind of recreation um, those are the two big things stepping in the shoes of refugees one can see their desperate need of help today they come to us with what little hope left in them since the UNHCR, Sudanese Embassy, and Egyptian government provide them with little aid, it is our responsibility to lend them a hand. Well, they can help them in two ways. They can go out and volunteer and get involved by uh, helping teach, and it would be teaching English. And it's beneficial for a couple of reasons. You, you know, you make a connection with another culture. You learn about teaching. So you really learn about language when you're trying to teach it. And, you know, it's helping contribute to some of the problems that are going on here. Uh, another way they could help is to do some kind of fundraising, uh, not in the school, but if they know any um, charitable organizations that might donate clothes or pencils or, you know, they're really in need of everything. As our life passes by, we are blinded by our wealth and the numerous opportunities that come our way. What to us is just a simple book, a blanket for the night, or a helping hand may be the world to others. We are blind to the problems of others less fortunate than us. We are blind to the pain they feel. We are blind to the poverty they live in. But if we take a moment, open our eyes and think of they instead of I, and put this thought to action by sharing a little of our knowledge and wealth, we will then be taking the first steps towards making a difference in the world.